Howdy YouTube. Something a little different today. This is the timer. This is the defrost timer out of a GE, 40 year old GE refrigerator. Um, the heater uh, around the door jam and the heater on the evaporation coil were running constantly and uh, they weren't turning off. So this is, well actually the heater and the compressor were both running at the same time. Um, and so chances are within 95% certainty that this uh, timer unit was bad. They're easily replaced, $10 online. Um, they're very simple devices. There's other places on YouTube where you can go to, uh, uh, to see the diagnostics. But uh, once I had it out, I took it apart to take a look at it, and uh, I figured I'd take you along for the ride. All right, this is nothing but a standard very slow RPM and motor that works on a 10 hour, 8 hour cycle or so that turns the blue gear in here and then the three leads, right, compressor, defrost, and it turns on back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the compressor runs for 8 hours, the defrost uh, heater runs for 20 minutes or something, somewhere along those lines. So we look at the electrical leads. You can see that this lead goes nowhere. This is the power. Uh, this is the power lead that goes to the little motor, the little, uh, the little motor that runs the timer. Um, actually, that's the common. The power that runs the, the hot in is this one right here, the one that's in the middle of these leads right here. And I'll show you why that is. But we can pop this one off. There we go, and we're down just to the timer. All right, there's nothing fancy going on here. The uh, timer, the motor, the motor sticks its gear through here and connects with this blue cog. And another thing I want to show while we've got this apart is, is that if you look on the backside, the pin for the blue cog, you can see that it's elongated. All right, this is the backside of the timer, so the cog is elongated, or the little pin that holds that blue cog is elongated. The reason that that makes, uh, the reason that it's that way is when the, when the gear for the, the timer motor is up through this hole right here, you can't spin this by hand. But you can spin this to run it through its cycle by hand from the outside with a screwdriver. And so I was playing with this for the longest time and then it made sense. This when you turn this by hand, you actually ratchet it above you above the cogs of this so that when this is up in here like so and you go to turn this, right? What's happening is is that the gears climb above the teeth on here and that makes sense as to why the pin in the back is elongated so that it can move back and forth to allow you to manually turn this on the outside. And if you've never looked at one of these, this is, this is what it looks like on the outside. So this is the thing that you can cycle it through, the on and off cycle with a screwdriver um, when you don't have the thing apart. But I drilled the rivets out so that I could have a gander on what's inside and bring you folks along. So let's open this back up again and get this off to the side. All right, so we have this electrical connection right here, which is the hot in, 120 hot in. This is the electrical connection for the common out, and the only thing that uses this is the motor that turns this timer assembly. So hot in, and then we've got, um, this is the defrost, and I'll show you why I know that, and then this is the, uh, this lead right here is for the compressor and the fan so that the cool, cooling process of the, of the motor works, of the refrigerator works. Now as we move these, you'll see that boom. And now it's on the defrost cycle. So the defrost is running power between these two because the always hot power lead here is now connecting here these two springs. And if I advance this just a little bit, click, 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 
you'll see now that the, it has switched from being uh, continuous between here and this lead. It's now continuous between here and this lead. And they continue the, the continuity between these two and will now remain, as you watch that gear, you watch it build, 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 build. And now the compressor is turned off. And the defrost unit is on for a little while through the rotation, but not very much. And then boom, the defrost cycle is now off. And now we're back on to uh, the regular compressor cooling cycle of the refrigerator. And there it goes again. And we advance it a little farther, and it snaps down to the next lowest level. And inside, you can actually see that per one revolution of this blue cog, we get we get a, a double cycle of the compressors on, the compressors on, the refrigerator is cooling, boom. The compressor turns off, it's no longer cooling, and now the defrost heater elements are on for a very short rotation. And click, there we go, our defrost timer is now off and the compressor and the cooling cycle of the refrigerator runs. We keep rotating it, we keep rotating it, we keep rotating it, and it's about ready to happen again. It clicked off, so the compressor is off, the defrost cycle is on for a very short few degrees, and now click, the defrost is off, and we're back on the compressor. And if I put the cover back over it again, <clears throat> you can see that we've got our normal electrical connections here to hook up the timer, the mechanical timer to the refrigerator to get our on and off compressor defrost cycle. Anywho, and here's the little electric motor. I have a feeling the motor is roached. Something happened, but the compressor and the defrost were on both at the same time, so I've got a new one of these on order. It should be here in a couple of days, and I'll throw it in the refrigerator, and we'll fix that problem. But I figured that uh, some folks may be curious as to what actually goes on inside one of these uh, uh, refrigerator defrost timers. That's it for now. I'll talk to you later. Bye.